Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. And I believe God wants to comfort his people right now. So we're going to get to comfort. And I already started, but we're going to start on the video right now. Picture yourself. Picture your life. Picture your emotional scars, your past, your issues, your emotional anger, bitterness. All is piled up all in one lump sum. And it all is you. And God understands you more than you do. But here you are, a hoarder, not a hoarder in the physical sense, like you see on TV, but in the emotional sense, in your memory bank. You can't let those memories go. Every time you get ready to toss it in the trash or God gets ready to take it from you and throw it in the sea of forgetfulness, you snatch it back and rehearse it all over again going through all the garbage, all the stale, rotten stench that comes from that bitter memory. And it has total control over your life, over how you think, over your perspective of life, your perspective of yourself, your perspective of God. It has total control over all of that. It clouds your thinking. It clouds your judgment. It jacks over your emotions and you flare up and get angry. You flare up and get offended. You flare up and get hurt. You flare up and get bitter. And you don't know why you react that way, but you can't help it. You just do. Well, that's because all that stuff you're hoarding. So imagine as you're walking through your house, there's no real space for you to walk through. Because every floor, every inch of everything is covered up to three to five feet tall. And you got to wade through all this junk in your life. You're wading through it, trying to function. You want to go to the kitchen and make yourself a cup of tea. Time to eat. You're hungry. You got to step over stuff. But you're barefooted. So before you know it's like, oh, what the heck was that? You can't see it. Because it's buried under stuff, but something just stuck you. Hmm. And you go through that every day. You don't know when you're going to get bumped, scarred, bruised, stuck, whatever, because there's so much junk in your house. Something may tumble and hit you upside the head. Because you're not handling that. You're not taking it to God to ha have him help you get rid of it. You're holding on to it. And that's what hoarders do. They don't throw anything away. They'll even keep a little wrapping paper from a Christmas present that they were given when they were 10 years old. They don't want to throw because they may use it one day. I mean, they all have these reasons why they don't get rid of stuff. And when you get on the TV programs and you watch them, they're crying out for help, right? They know they need help. And the people are there, the team is there to help them sit down, organize, get everything, categorize, and, and, and then the next thing they do is the purging process. That is the most painful thing for them to go through because that means they have to throw away this stuff. And when the person grabs the thing to shove it in the garbage bag, you should see how some of them break down in tears. They're not ready to let go. Well, the only way you're going to clean your house is to let go. And some of you, the only way you're going to clean up your emotions, the only way you're going to remove the discouragements, the only way you're going to move the attitude is to let go of all the hurts that you have blamed all your life. And it's easy to blame the hurts when you keep them with you everywhere you go. You can point to it. Yeah, when that happened, I became like that because they did that to me. This is how I am now. Yeah, but you don't have to stay that way because the Bible does say, y'all, the Bible talks about how old things are passed away. Thank you, Lord. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. When it says are become, it means are becoming progressive, are becoming new. But you have to get rid of the old to make room for the new. 
And that's the sad part. We don't realize how much God loves us. Davina had shared a song with us, how God's fighting for me. Beautiful song. He fights for you when you want to sit down and wallow in your own pity. Picture a baby sitting down on the ground with legs wide open, diapers soaking wet, and they sitting there peeing and the peeing, the pee is spewing out of the diaper on the ground and they're just sitting there wallowing in their pee. Woo! And they're just sitting there. They won't get up. They won't call mommy. <laughs> and they're wallowing in their own. And we wallow in our own pity. And we sit there. And we indulge ourselves. We throw a full-fledged pity party. And then we get angry. And God knows why. God knows why. Many of you, you think God ain't going to deal with you with so long. Because you got folks in your life that tell you, I ain't dealing with that crap. You, know, you take that stuff somewhere else. I ain't got time to play with no babies today. I ain't got time for no attitude. I don't have time for your, for your rage and your outbursts and your temper tantrums. You're throwing things across. No, you ain't going to tear up my house today. You go somewhere to take a walk. Get up out of my face before I do something. Give you a reason to cry. That's what we do as human beings. God treats all of that when we are normally acting like brats. God treats all of that with respect because he's very tender how he handles our wounds. He's tender about how he handles our psychological misgivings. He, he's very tender. He uses tender, loving care because he's a compassionate. He's not only loving, he's compassionate. He's insightful. He's understanding. Oh, what I love about God, when I look back at the times when I acted like a big old fat spoiled brat, pity partying to the bone, had the balloons and the, and the, the streamers and everything, even the violin music was playing loud, all into my pity parties, temper tantrums, rage, all of it. I sat down one day and I said, God, why, why? Do I act like this? What's wrong with me? Plain as day, as if somebody was standing right in my ear. He spoke one word. Didn't even expect an answer, but I got it. And the answer I got was, because I didn't know, he did. He spoke the word rage. And I was like, rage? Rage? That's how surprised Dum Diddy Dum Dum was. Rage? You mean I'm that angry? And I, well, Lord, please take that out because I don't like me when I act like that. That turns me off. Ain't nobody here but me and you, and I'm getting sick of myself. Please take that out of me. That's ugly. I don't like acting like a big baby. I don't like acting like that. I don't like feeling like that. Ugh. Please heal me, Lord. Heal whatever causes me to be that way. And I never stop asking him to heal. If there's anything in me that needs healing, get to work and do not let it linger in me. Because I don't like smelling myself. I'm sorry. When you get to the point where you smell yourself out in public baby cakes, everybody else been smelling you when you first left the house. You're the last to know. That's usually the way that goes. And while everybody else is like, Woo! Help me, Lord. You're walking around having a wonderful time and you don't know you're spreading stink everywhere you go. Well, that's the way it is with the Lord. You're the last one to know. 
And that is what I love about God is God doesn't say things to us like, will you grow up? Oh, stop it. Stop acting. Oh, I'm so sick of hearing you with all that. Da, 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 da. No, God doesn't do that. God is love, which means he is the personification, the epitome of love. And love treats with respect. Hmm. God does not make a person who already feels like nothing who already feels like a nobody. God does not beat on that person. When he talks about Jesus Christ, he says he will not put out a smoking flax. If there's smoke, there can still be fire. He'll fan it, but he won't put it out because he knows many of us are almost about to give up and we're just all we are is a smoking flax. That's all that's left because we're so discouraged. We're so depressed. We're so frustrated. We're so disheartened. And we're so uh, just disgusted with ourselves. And we just know God must be disgusted with us. He's ready to throw in the towel on our little sorry behinds. But no, the Bible says God doesn't do that. He doesn't put out a smoking flax. No. He'll do his best to reignite that baby. But he won't put your fire all the way out. People will, but God won't. If he sees smoke, he knows there's potential for reignition. There's more fire where that came from. And he will encourage you and light your fire. He will not put your fire out like many abusive people do, like many people who are, dis, who, who are insensitive, who are indifferent, who, who don't even regard you, who don't even respect you. They'll put your light out and stomp on you and tell you to kiss their behind while the doorknob hits you where the dog should have bit you. They'll, I mean, yeah, they'll beat a man when he's down. God does not. God does the Bible says he doesn't even get on our case when we ask him for wisdom. He upbraideth not. No, he gives liberally and, uh, and upbraideth not, which means he doesn't fuss at you for not having it. You 46 years old, you ain't got that yet? What's taking you so long? No, God doesn't say that. He meets us at our need. He doesn't tell us when the need should have been met long time ago. Know that God loves you. Know that God, <clears throat> he is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. There's nothing impossible for the Lord. You feel like a lost cause, that's on you. That ain't on God. When God looks at you, he sees a reflection of his son. That's not a lost cause. Where there's Jesus, there's hope. So you always keep Jesus in your heart. When you feel like you've lost all hope, don't lose Jesus. As long as you have him in your heart, there's always hope. Always hope. Even for those who don't yet have him in their heart. If they're leaning towards God, there's always hope. Whatever you do, don't get offended in God because God is not the one fighting against you. You are enemy number one. The devil is enemy number two. But not God. He's not your enemy. I really hope and pray that all of you get to experience personally, one-on-one, -on -one, the love of God. Once you feel his love, once you experience 
his love, which is him. When you experience his love, you're experiencing him. They're not separate. It's like drinking a, a glass of water. You drink a glass of water and your thirst is becoming satisfied. Well, they go hand in hand. The thirst going away and the water going down your throat. Go hand in hand. When the love drenches your spirit, that's God touching you. That's God's presence all wrapped around you. That's God validating you, giving you self-worth. God letting you know how important you are to him. Pursue him for his love. Because I'm telling you, you may doubt a whole lot of things and question a whole lot of things in life. But you'll never wonder if God is for you ever again. Because that one experience of his love will have you satisfied, will keep you convinced for the rest of your life, no matter what else goes wrong, you will know that you know that you know. No matter how much you question your mama's love, your father's love, your lover's love, your friend's love, no matter how much you question people's love, you will never ever question God's love. Because when he gets in there, it's sealed. There's a, an inner satisfaction. There's an, an, an inner click that happens that says, yes, just like I know I'm alive. I know I'm breathing. I'm in my right mind. I know God loves me. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's half the battle right there. That's half the battle, knowing that God is for you. And God is for you. He says in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to bless you, not harm you, to give you a hope and a future. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wish all of God's babies, and I'm one of them, I wish all of God's babies could feel his embrace. I wish you could feel how much he cares for you. Cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. If you only knew the love of God is not anything that you have ever felt on the face of this earth. It's like somebody giving you a glass of water from the faucet and then giving you a glass of water from the galaxy. The water doesn't look the same. The water doesn't smell the same. The water doesn't taste the same. It's totally different, but it quenches everything more than just your thirst. That's the way the love of God is. It doesn't feel like anything on the face of this earth. It is so unadulterated. It is so pure. It is so majestic. It is so beautiful and rich. And if you only knew how beautiful God's love was, when you feel it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I can't describe it to you. It's indescribable, but it is the most phenomenal thing to experience. And his love alone will keep you where nothing else can. So whatever you do, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel on you. Don't throw in the towel on God because he's not your enemy. You are. The devil is your enemy. People are your enemy, but not God. God bless you. Stay encouraged. God sees all your efforts. He has not forsaken your labor of love. God bless you. Stay encouraged, all right? And stay in the race, even if all you can do is crawl your way to the finish line. Crawl, but don't give up. I don't care how dirty you get while you're crawling. Cross that line. Press toward the mark 
of the high press toward the prize of the mark of the high calling of God. Press. 